Okay, now let's get down to work. We got everything open, we got our project going. Let's start building our masterpiece. We want to copy this image to our selections document that we created. So I'm gonna to go to um, Temple of the Moon here and with my move tool active, I can, oh actually not the move tool, I could have a selection tool like a marquee tool. With the marquee tool, I can right click and duplicate layer. All right, so not with the move tool, it won't work, but with one of these selection tools, all right? Even that one, we could do it, but I might as well do the marquee tool, right click, duplicate layer. If I were to just click OK right now, it would duplicate it on this current document. That's not what I want. I want to duplicate it into selections. And instead of background copy, I'm going to call it mountains and click OK. Now we can go over to our selections tab and you can see it added it. For some reason, it did not rename it or keep the name Mountain. That's kind of a weird glitch in Adobe at the moment, but it's okay. We can click on it right on the text and rename it to Mountains. That is one of the key things you want to do to be organized. Rename your layers. Might not seem like much right now because we only have two layers, Mountains and Background, but as your designs get more complex, naming layers is is vital there's just if you're going to be a designer you want to do it you want to look like you know what you're doing now we don't want this white border our background is white i don't want that i want to stretch this layer out but before i do that i do not want to destroy pixels so once you make something bigger, make something smaller, do these different things, you can be, like like if I shrunk this down, I would be destroying pixels. I'd be taking pixels away. Then if I made it bigger again, it would try to fill pixels in, it would look awful. So instead, as always in this class when learning about Photoshop, we want to learn about non-destructive editing. At all possible, we don't want to destroy, damage, or manipulate original pixels. We want to keep those safe in case we need to make changes. There are times when you can't do non-destructive editing, but at any time possible, we want to do it. So with that said, I'm going to right-click on this layer, and I'm going to convert it to a smart object. We'll talk in more detail about smart objects, but essentially, it's going to preserve the original and kind of hide it away for us. And you can see it added this little icon in the bottom right. I'm going to hit Command T to free transform. Command T, T for transform. And then I'm going to hold Shift and Option at the same time. And I'm going to click and drag just until I fill my space, left to right, on my landscape. And I'm going to keep going just a little bit, something like that, just to make sure I have all of it in there. I let go of everything. Now I need to place it, right? Right now it's still in free transform mode. I need to set my transformation. I'm gonna do that by either clicking return on the keyboard or the check mark up here to commit the transform or the return key, all right? Easier for me just to do the return key. So now we've placed mountains. Next, we are going to Go over to Mars, and we're going to learn our first selection tool. We're gonna to learn about the marquee selection tools. The first one by default is the rectangular marquee tool. But if we notice there's a small triangle underneath or in the bottom right of this tool, that means if I were to hold down, I can see additional marquee tools, including an elliptical marquee tool, which is the one that I want. They both work the same. One draws an ellipse and the other draws a rectangle. There is also single row and single column. You could pretty much figure out what those do. So I'm gonna go with the 
elliptical marquee tool and I want to make a selection of Mars. All right, so I'm going to click outside of Mars here in the upper left and I'm going to drag down to the right. I'm not going to let go of my mouse though. This is really key. The elliptical marquee tool is a little picky. So you notice upper left hand corner of Mars isn't selected. So I haven't let go of anything. I'm going to hold the space bar and I'm going to drag or move my mouse back up to the upper left. I'm going to let go of the space bar. I'm going to keep dragging out so I can kind of match the right and then the bottom a little bit. And you can keep holding space bar, right? I can space bar and move this all around. And then when I'm done moving it, I let go of the space bar. And I want to get it as close as possible. Something like that. Oops. When I get it close, I'm going to let go. So it's not perfect. Really hard to get perfect, especially I'm doing a trackpad. Luckily, not a problem. We talked about we're working with selections. So if we look up at our menu, there's going to be a selection menu or select. Deals with selections, including transform selection. I'm going to click on that. It's going to give us a very similar box to what we saw previously when we widened the mountains. And I'm going to drag out like this. I can also hold command, right, and drag a point, kind of drag a corner just to get it more precise. I want to get this as close as possible. I want to favor being inside the planet a little bit rather than outside. If I had to kind of cheat in one direction, I would want to have no black but rather cut off a little bit of my planet. When I have my selection as I like and I have my and I have Mars selected pretty well, return to set it. All right, we don't need that. Let's get rid of it. Now, I want to take this selection. All right. And I have my selection tools active. And I'm going to hit command J to jump it up to a new layer. Command J to jump it up to a new layer. Double click on it, call it Mars. Then from here, we can right click in the empty space of the layer and click duplicate layer if we want. And we're going to make a duplication, not into Mars, but into selections and click OK. Now you can see that we're over in selections and there is Mars on top of the mountains huge right so we're going to resize that again before we resize it here I'll show you proof of example so I'm going to command T to free transform we got this beautiful clear high res moon and I'm going to shrink it way way down just like this just to show you what happens if you don't make it a smart object now we don't see it because it shrunk down here that's fine but I've shrunk it now I'm going to make it bigger again. I command T and I'm going to shift all the way back. Make it big like this and hit return. Now, hopefully you'll notice that that is no longer perfectly high res. It's starting to get blurry because I removed pixels when I shrunk it. All right, so I'm going to undo that because I don't want it. Um, one kind of pain in the butt with Photoshop is if you do command Z, undo, it only does one step. So you need to do command option Z to do multiple undos. Command option Z for multiple undos. And we are going to right click, convert that to a smart object. Now we can command T, shift an option, make it a little bit smaller. Hit return to set it. We want it behind our mountain, so stacking order of layers is really important. If we want the moon behind the mountain, we are going to, or Mars behind the mountain, we need to drag it behind the mountain. And with the Mars layer active, I can take my move tool, which is the top tool, or V 
for move. And I'm going to move this. Oh, <laughs> never mind. We can't see it. Let's move it back for now. I'm just going to move it here. reason why we can't see it for now, I forgot we haven't cut out the sky yet. That's fine. We will do that in the next tutorial. I'm just going to move it up here to the upper left for now. 